Hello friends, I am Dr. Pavan Gulhane from Medigrace Hospital Nagpur and today we are going to be discussing about a case of supra cervical septum resection. In this image you can see a uterine septum, uh, internal loss and the cervical portion. Most of us think that uterine cavity is going to be like this uh, when you are doing hysteroscopy with both the horns are going to be dilated. But actually in the resting position uterine horns are going to be collapsed like coins horizontally. When you do hysteroscopy one horn is going to be dilated under the effect of normal saline the other horn is going to be collapsed and that can cause problems. So hence we do put a police balloon in one horn and do the hysteroscopic resection of the septum above the internal loss. Now this, uh, this is uh, we are doing a hysteroscopy before attending any surgical correction and as you can see we are entering by vaginoscopic approach into the right of the right side of the cervix and once you enter the uh, once you negotiate the internal loss you realize that you have entered into the cavity of the uterus which has uh, which is which is a single horn which has a diagnostic feature of having a ostium at the apex of it and you see the septum on the medial medial side of the uh, cavity This is basically a diagnostic diagnostic uh, uh, exercise that we are doing right now just to see whether the septum is complete, the size of the septum, the thickness of the septum. This is the another horn that is the left horn of the uterus and you again going to see the ostium at the apex of the horn and that makes it a diagnostic that patient is having a complete uterine septum right from the fundus to the cervical cavity. Now what next we do is, we just put in a Foley's balloon in one of the horn. Mostly I put a balloon in the left horn and start my uh, septoplasty from the right horn. This is a Foley's catheter uh, number 8 that is put in, uh, in the left horn and the balloon is inflated so that when we are not doing, we are doing hysteroscopy on another horn, this cavity is going to be distended with the help of Foley's balloon. And obviously, the, because the Foley's balloon is inflated, your, your the septal wall is going to be standing right in front of you and you have a better margin of correction of the septum and less chances that you might enter into the false passage in another cavity. Now we have reached uh, on the right horn of the uh, uterus and we will be starting our dissection. We have identified the internal loss and we will start our dissection right above the internal loss where we expect the uterine septum is uh, is to be thinnest in that portion. I generally use a, a cold scissor for doing septoplasty and I do a transaction of the septum rather than dissection of the septum. Now immediately once you start giving a nick because this is going to be absolutely a thin portion of the septum you directly see the Foley's balloon that is going to be there on the opposite side of the uterine cavity or it is uh, it is going to be on the left side of the uterine horn. Uh, obviously while doing sept uh, your, your septoplasty you have to rupture the balloon and take the Foley's catheter away. But during this what happens is your uh, fluid is going to leak from another side of the cavity and to prevent that you can just hold the cervix on the opposite side or the cavity on the opposite side and twist the uh, uh, twist your ileus whatever you are holding the uh, cervix with. One more thing we have to be very sure that you are giving a nick exactly in the center of the septum so that again you don't uh, you don't have any chances of uh, going into the false passage. Slowly slowly cut into the center then you mark the ostia on both the sides till the till the place where you have to go and cut the septum and then you progress the technique that i follow is give a small incision in the middle extend it up to the uh, ostia till the time till the area you can uh, do the septoplasty not avoiding injury to the uh, uh, muscular rim around the ostium uh, and then you you uh, keep on cutting in the center so that you stay in the same line and you avoid injury to the osteal ring also 
while doing septoplasty it is very important for one to to keep a track of the myometrium fundal myometrium fundal myometrium is going to be seen as a pinkish colored tissue at the at the apex and obviously once you reach the fundal myometrium it is uh, it is uh, vital for you to stop there because once uh, if you keep on digging the fundal myometrium there is high chance that you might enter into the abdominal cavity and there is a perforation at the fundus so uh, keep a track of pinkish tissue that is going to come you can do one more uh, trick that is decrease the pressure uh, in, in the uh, uterine cavity by lowering the uh, saline pressure and uh, you can see the the trickle or the blood vessels those are pouring the blood inside the cavity this is the uh, this is the septoplasty is over at this point of time you can see both the ostia are at the same level as uh, the fundus and the cavity is nicely open now you see the the interlos ring that is right in front of us and if you come out from this portion you see the cervical uh, canal that means the cervical uh, uh, portion of the septum is kept intact and that will obviously in future prevent the cervical incontinence and the chances of preterm uh, labor or preterm delivery will be decreased uh, post procedure we do uh, put the police balloon inside the uterine cavity for 10 to 14 days this is the post-operative picture or post-septoplasty picture of the uterus that shows the broad-based fundus.